Drip pins. What are they and why might you want to blacken them on your freight cars? That's what we're talking about today. I'm Roy Smith and I'm always glad when you can join me to share the amazing hobby of model railroading. We model railroaders tend to focus on the big tasks when building our layouts. These big tasks include such things as bench work, track work, wiring, and scenery. But sometimes we want to work on details instead. One example of detail work, among many examples, is blackening the trip pins on our freight cars. These are trip pins, as shown in the red circle. They are used for magnetic uncoupling. The trip pin's job is to trip the uncoupling mechanism in the coupler so that the cars will uncouple magnetically. Here's a clip showing magnetic uncoupling in a video that I uploaded back in October 2017 called Staging Yard Changes on My N-Scale Layout. In this clip, I showed you how magnetic uncoupling works. I plan to use Kato's magnetic uncouplers on each of the tracks in my staging yard back then in 2017. But ultimately, I decided to uncouple trains in my staging yard manually, just as I do everywhere else on my layout, because I found magnetic uncouplers to be finicky, so I ended up removing all of them from my staging yard. I think a majority of us model railroaders don't actually use uncoupling magnets. Most of us prefer to uncouple our cars manually. The advantage of doing it manually is that you can uncouple your cars anywhere on the layout and not just where the magnets are located. Like so many of you, I use a Rick's pick or wooden skewer to uncouple my cars. Trip pins on our model trains vaguely resemble the air hoses on real trains, such as you see here. Remember, air hoses are a part of the braking system on real trains. If the trip pins on our models look bright and shiny like this one on the left, we can blacken them if we wish, like the one on the right, to make them look more like real air hoses. We'll talk about doing that in a moment. A problem with trip pins is that they can get snagged when going through turnouts, if they are set too low. And when trip pins get snagged in turnouts, it can lead to a catastrophic derailment of your train. To avoid this, some modelers cut the trip pins off their couplers, but I just can't bring myself to do this. I feel it reduces the resale value of a car, and cutting them off does not improve the car's appearance, in my opinion. Instead, I prefer to leave them on and to adjust them so that they don't snag in turnouts. Unlike other brands of couplers, couplers on Kato rolling stock do not come with trip pins already installed in them. Instead, the trip pins are in the box and you can install them yourself or leave them off as you prefer. If you are sure that you are never going to want to uncouple your cars magnetically, then you may decide to go ahead and cut off or remove the trip pins that come on your cars. However, in the case of microtrains couplers, don't remove them altogether because they serve to hold the coupler together. You can cut off the lower portion of the trip pin if you wish, but don't pull out the microtrain's trip pins completely. I never cut off my trip pins and I don't remove them either. Instead, I adjust their height if need be. To do this, I run them over this thin piece of metal that comes with the microtrain's coupler height gauge. If they barely clear the metal sheet, as you see here, then no adjustment in the trip pin height is needed. If, on the other hand, they hit the metal sheet, then you have to bend them up slightly so that later on they don't snag in turnouts. You can use needle nose pliers such as these to bend the trip pins up slightly and gently. The truth is, I have installed lots of microtrains truck mounted couplers on my freight cars, but so far I haven't found it necessary to adjust the height on more than perhaps one or two of them. They almost always seem to come positioned at the correct height. Now then, some trip pins come already blackened and some don't. So if they're not already blackened, how can you go about blackening them to make them resemble air brake hoses on real freight cars? Here are the four ways I've done it. I tried to use a Sharpie because I heard that some people do this. 
but I wasn't happy with the results. The ink wouldn't adhere to the metal of the trip pin very well. Even after applying several coats, the ink still didn't cover up the trip pins completely. I tried using track painting pens with slightly better results. I painted the trip pins with Vallejo acrylic paint using a micro brush. I found this method worked quite well. Then I turned to a product called Neolube to blacken my trip pins, again using a micro brush. I found that Neolube flows on smoothly and blackens the trip pins very nicely. It is a water-thin graphite alcohol solution. Its main drawback is that it's kind of expensive at $35 for a two ounce bottle like this, but I think this bottle will last me a lifetime. Another drawback is that Neolube can be quite messy, so you may want to wear plastic gloves when using it. And if you're really into detail work, you can touch the tip of each trip pin with a dab of silver paint to resemble the interlocking glad hand connectors on the air hoses. Glad hand connectors resemble a pair of hands shaking when interlocked, hence their name. But here's a question for you. Why do trip pins sometimes come bright, shiny, and toy-like, and other times come already blackened, even from the same manufacturer? Here's an example. Very same product with the very same product number. The first pack of trucks I bought came with these bright, shiny trip pins that needed to be blackened. The second pack of identical trucks that I bought came with the trip pins already blackened. Does anybody know why this might be? Has microtrains wisened up? Or did I just get lucky with the second pack? Does anybody know? Well, I don't know, but you can be sure that I will blacken any trip pins that don't come already blackened, because doing this makes them look much more realistic. How about you? What has been your experience with trip pins? Well, again, thanks for joining me today to talk about trip pins. Now you can click over here to see more videos about upgrading your freight cars. As always, I'm Roy Smith. Until next time, happy railroading.